So now let's take a look at a fixed axis rotation example problem. We have two different bodies, both in fixed axis rotation. The first is OABC on the upper left, and the second is CD on the lower right. They touch at a non-slip point right in between here, point C. And we're given information that point A on the upper left of OABC has a velocity of 3 meters per second to the right, and that's decreasing at 0.5 meters per second squared. Okay, so that decreasing value is essentially the tangential acceleration. It's going to be a negative tangential acceleration if we go ahead and use an xy coordinate system. So the things that we're looking to solve for, first we're going to find the angular velocity of the upper left body, OABC. Next, we're going to find the acceleration of point B here in the upper right corner in both xy and also tangent normal coordinates. Uh, now, the tangent normal coordinates are going to be of point B as it rotates around point O. The third thing we'll find is going to be the angular acceleration of that same body. And then the fourth is going to be the angular velocity of the other body, CD. We have our relationship, a scalar relationship, V is equal to omega times R. We can rearrange this that omega is equal to VA over... To write this as r of a relative to o, right? Our position vector starting from our fixed axis point going up to our point a. And so we put in the value of 3 divided by 0 0.3. This was in uh, meters per second. This is in meters. The meters cancel. We end up with 10 something per second. It turns out to be radians per second, right? Remember, radians is that ghost unit that can, it can disappear, it can show up again, right? Here we're actually having it show up out of nothing because we actually have a one over seconds. Um, but all of our, our angular velocities will be in radians per second. So you can also think of a radian per second is actually a frequency, right? A frequency being like something um, um, just basically one over time as a frequency. So 10 radians per second. And then what direction? Is that 10 radians per second, positive or negative k-hat? That was going to be a negative k-hat. And did that direction come from, like, is there a reverse cross product that you can do on this and come up with that, that uh, vector direction, or is that from observation? Just observation. That's all we have to work with on this one. So this is by observation. But noting, just notation-wise, you could write this as the omega of OA, the omega of BC. We tend to, like, not all bodies have four different letters on them, but you could, because it's the omega for the whole body, we often write omegas using typically two of the letters that are on that body. It just says, hey, this is the omega for that body, just like omega of CD, we'd write as just omega of CD. So there's kind of some flexibility in notation. Um, I'll adjust to whatever you use and just you know, realizing. I put all four letters just to say, hey, it doesn't matter what point you look at, they all have the same omega, right? Omegas are for bodies. Um, let's go ahead and um, compute here part C, just because we're already kind of in the mode of, the, the computation is really similar to what we just did for part A. So that's the answer for part A. For part C, we can say that alpha, or excuse me, got the wrong direction here, A sub T is equal to alpha times R, right? So that's the scalar equivalent of A sub T is equal to alpha cross R. And the reason I use the scalar form is I need to solve for alpha, so I need to rearrange this equation. And we end up with alpha is equal to the acceleration at point A tangential divided by the distance between A and O. So R of A relative to O. And so putting these numbers in, uh, we had a, de so the velocity was decreasing at 0.5 meters per second squared, so 0 0.5 meters per second squared divided by a length, the same length, 0 0.3 meters. Our meters go away. We end up with um, 1.667, and the units are going to be something over 
seconds squared, and this is where our ghost unit radians comes back. Um, so this is in radians per second squared. And by observation, we could find this is in the positive k-hat. Okay, positive k-hat in order to accelerate that body positive from the right-hand rule so that um, point A can be slowing down um, given that velocity moving to the right. All right, so this is the answer to part C. And I guess officially, just to put the box, like... Just watch for notation. If I ask for a vector answer, you want to include those positive or negative k hats. If it just asks for the magnitude, so as these are written, these are both magnitude. And so officially, you wouldn't need that direction. Now, if you add the direction, I'm going to be totally fine with that. And so if you want to say, when in doubt, just add the direction, um, I'll count either one as correct. All right, any questions on omega and alpha? So the question was, why wouldn't 0.5 be negative? So this gets into this whole issue, like realize that, that you probably do, that the, the vector version of this equation is a sub t is equal to alpha cross r, right? It's based upon a cross product. There is no mathematical operator to uh, do the inverse of a cross product, right? So if we add two numbers together, we know that if we want to do the inverse of that, we subtract them. If we multiply them, we divide them, right? There's these kind of like inverse operators. There is no inverse cross product. And so as you take a look at solving for alpha and omega, there's actually no, um, I mean, there is a vector relationship between these terms, but there's not a vector operator that handles those. And so the direction in this equation um, really comes from your observation of how that body needs to move in order to create this um, acceleration. The other way you can look at it is what alpha direction would I need to cross into R, which is going upwards, to end up with an acceleration that's going to the left, right? So you can, like, back check it if you want to. Um, but there's just no way going frontwards through these equations to carry through the vector directions. Now, in this case, you are correct. Well, you can put the negative in there. But then it just kind of gets weird because you get this negative number and then you look at it and you go, well, it's positive. So is that, how do I deal with that? So I typically think of this as like just a magnitude, a pure magnitude, always positive, and pick up your direction from observation. Good question. Other questions on omega and alpha? All right. So next as a axes challenge, Write for me the R of, and this is all related to part B. Write the R of B relative to O in both XY coordinates and then also R of B relative to O in tangent normal coordinates. And this is the tangent normal of B. Okay, so of point B, which is in that upper right corner of that body. See if you can write those two vectors. So looking at our axis systems, we have an XY axis system. So that would be pretty straightforward. We're going to go 0.4 meters to the right in the X, 0.3 meters up. Okay, so positive 0.4, positive 0.3. In the tangent normal of point B, it turns out that all of our distance is going to be the N direction. And it's going to actually be in the negative n direction because that position vector is going from O to B, and our normal axis direction is coming from B to O, right? So a distance of 0.5. It's a 3, 4, 5 proportional triangle. So we end up with these values. One of those is 0 0.4, 0 0.3. And then here, um, 0, comma, negative 0 0.5. Okay, the same vector expressed just in two different coordinate systems. All right, and the reason that we do this is I'm going to jump back a page in the notes because I don't, I don't remember how much I emphasized this, and even if I did, I want to emphasize it again, is that if we look at these three equations, right? These are fundamentally our equations. That's the one we use for velocity. Here's the one we use for tangential acceleration, here's the one we use for normal accelerations. They are all based upon R. 
right? They all contain an R vector inside of those equations. If you feed in these R vectors as XY component vectors, you'll get answers for your velocity and your accelerations as XY, as XY components. If you feed in tangent normal into those R vectors, you'll get tangent normal vector components for your velocity and your accelerations. Now, I know that might seem a little, you're like, he's talking about XY components of tangent and normal terms, right? But once again, I'm talking about you're going to get the same vector, just expressed in a different coordinate system, OK? Um, so that's kind of a key thing. Let me put that in words right here, that um, the coordinate system of our vector will be the coordinate system of v a sub t and a sub n. OK, so it fundamentally, by putting those R vectors in tangent normal or xy, it doesn't give you a different answer. It just expresses it in a different coordinate system. So the coordinate system of R will be the coordinate system of v, a sub t, and a sub n. And the reason for that is because all of the rotational vectors, omega and alpha, they're all perpendicular to the page, right? They're actually kind of independent of xy or tn. Um, they're all in like the positive or negative um, z direction. Okay, so coming back here to our example, here's our two different uh, position vectors. Let's go ahead and solve for the A, B, sub T. My acceleration at point B tangential is equal to alpha of the body of OABC as a vector crossed with R of B relative to O. So let's put in these numbers. 1.667 in the K hat crossed with, I'll go ahead and write the I hat, J hat version just so we see all the unit vectors. 0 0.4 in the I hat plus 0 0.3 in the J hat. So I know at least related to Dynamics, you probably had your unit vector cross products on mothballs. No one uses mothballs anymore. They really stink. That's just like an old saying of you put your sweaters in the like, you know, cedar cabinet for the summer on mothballs and you bring them out in the fall and they'd reek. Um, we actually saw Santa Claus this year that he put his Santa suit in mothballs and my kids were just like, what's wrong with Santa? Um, we're going to cross K hat into an I hat and then we're going to cross K hat into a J hat, just to remind our brains, I hat, J hat, K hat. If you stay in that order, it's going to be positive. I like writing it in positive with the right hand rule. If you go in the opposite direction, it's going to be negative. So a K hat into an I hat gives me a negative J hat. And a K hat into a J hat gives me a, let me go to, yeah, sorry. Here. K hat into, no, wrong way. K into a J gives you a positive, sorry, I might have said it wrong. K into an I, K into an I is positive J. And then K into J is negative I. There we go. All right, so I just basically multiply the coefficients, bring over these unit vectors. I end up with a vector, going back to my bracket notation, of negative 0 0.5 comma 0 0.667. Okay, so that's my A, B sub T vector in meters per second squared. I'm going to do the same thing for my normal A, B sub N as a vector is equal to the negative of the omega Sorry, I put the negative up front. Let's not do that. Let's put it with the R. So the omega squared times negative R B relative to O. 
This is the vector part. Okay, so a scalar number squared times the negative r vector. I know that to turn this into a negative, uh, the opposite direction, I just put negative signs in front of each term, right? So I'll go to negative 0.4, negative 0.3. And so this looks like um, 10 squared times uh, negative 0 0.4 comma negative 0 0.3, leaving it my bracket notation. So this works out to be negative 40 comma negative 30 in meters per second squared. All right, so those are my vector components. Now, if I asked for the overall acceleration, you could certainly add those components together. That would give you the overall a sub b. I'm just going to leave them as those two independent components for this one. Questions on those components? You could totally, uh, you just, so if you wanted to find, so fundamentally we could say that a b vector is equal to a b sub t vector plus a b sub n vector. So if I want to find the overall, the total, I just add them together. All right, so that was for my x, y components. Let me, so now to do the same thing for my other position vector. I made R negative because, so if we come back here, let's actually just draw these real fast. My, actually let me just draw them down here, they'll fit better. My point B is over here, right? Here's the body, here's the body. My R vector is coming up this direction. So the reason that A, B sub N is negative of this R, right? This is R of B relative to O is it's in the opposite direction. So I'm just flipping those components, which effectively flips the whole direction of the vector. And so let me just draw in here that this is the other. So here is my A, B sub T. Now, this is not to scale. Our A, B sub N ended up way, way bigger than our A, B sub T, right? It was massively larger. All right, let's do this cross product. So a, B sub T in my tangent normal. The equation's the same. Alpha cross R of B relative to O. But I now have, and I have the same alpha, 1.667. It is in the K hat. Now I cross that 0 0.5 negative E hat sub N. I know I've only used that notation once, but it's the unit vector in the normal direction. And all I've really done is I brought over the negative that was on the 0.5, right? So you can put that negative either place, either in front of the 0.5 or with the unit vector. Now, one thing to, to warn you about is that tangent normal is not a right-hand coordinate system, right? When we're looking at um, x, y, z, we know that x cross into y always gives me a z, right? It's a right-hand coordinate system. Tangent normal is defined by the direction of motion and the curvature of the path, which are not necessarily right hand. Okay, so in doing, so I'll say that also, luckily we're not going to do hardly any of these tangent normal cross products. We're going to stick to x, y cross products. But for this one, as we take a look at it, if we cross negative, which is going into the board, into uh, my n direction, which is basically coming down here, we end up with, um, a vector that's going in the t direction, right? Just fundamentally by crossing those two vectors together. So we can write this out that this equals a value of 0 0.833 comma 0, right? These are my t n components. And so this is also my a, b sub t vector. Okay, so something you can notice about these two vectors, this one and that one, is if you checked with the Pythagorean theorem on their magnitudes, you'd find out they're exactly the same. 
Right, they're expressing the same vector, just in two different coordinate systems. Now, you could have also found your angles between the two coordinate systems and taken a sine and a cosine. You get the same terms, right? So it's just a different technique to get those components. And then to get the last one here, A, B, sub N. This is equal to the same uh, omega squared, 10 squared in the negative R of B relative to O vector direction. We'll just flip the sign on this negative, it'll become a positive 0.5. We end up with AB sub n as a vector equal to 100 times 0.5, so 0, 50 in meters per second squared. And once again, these two vectors, whether you solve for it in xy, or in tangent normal, same magnitude. Fundamentally, they're going in the same direction, right? Just with respect to a different axis system. This one's positive because we know that my normal axis, right, is coming back down this direction, my normal axis, and as my tangent direction is going that way. 